Welcome to this video on setting up your Outlook calendar so you are super productive. I've used Outlook in most of the jobs I've had and I've sometimes used it personally as well and there's loads of hints and tips and tricks that I use to make my calendar nice and productive and easy for me to view and work with and have my work time spaces blocked out so that I can really focus on what I need to do and not worry about other stuff. So I'm going to give you some top tips and tricks and hints in here. Some you might already know, some might be new to you. You maybe want to give them a try and just see what works best for you because everyone is absolutely different. So the first one I'm going to say is I'm currently in my Outlook calendar. It's absolutely blank. That never happens. Um, and one of the first things I do is set up the view. So if this is my work calendar, I want this to be Monday to Friday because that's when I generally work in my job. And it's currently set for the work for the week, not the work week. And I just want to switch and view the work week because that's going to be much easier for me. I've got rid of Saturday, Sunday, and I don't need to worry too much about those days when I'm prepping what I'm doing. There's also a few extra settings that I can do on here. Um, and I'm going to go to the cog in the top right hand corner to set my calendar up in the best way. So I'm going to click on that cog icon and you can see in the settings on the left hand side, it's gone to calendar because that is the option I'm in when I turned my settings on. If you're in the desktop Outlook application, then you want to go to the settings in the top right hand corner. So I've got a few options here. I can change my view. I generally leave it on 30 minutes because that works best for me. And you can use dynamic column whips if you want to. And that puts a real focus on the day that you are on. I don't always like that. I feel like it looks a bit weird for me. So I tend to take that off. And then you can see the time zone that you are in. So you always want to make sure you set the time zone that you are in. So the timings make sense to you. It's a really simple thing. But if it's wrong, then it can really confuse you. And what you can also do if you work in a global team, if you work with people in different locations, you can add extra time zones so you can get a bit more information. So if I select, let's say, Charlotte, for North Carolina, I can see that's minus five hours. I can see it's shown in calendar and I can even add a label to it, but I'm going to just leave it as it is because I think that's quite useful. And that helps me understand what time zone some of my colleagues are on, which again makes it really easy for me to book meetings and have a look at meetings and see whether it might be useful to invite that person or it might be really early in the morning and I shouldn't do that to them. So I've got a few options there. I'm going to click save and just lock those in. And then I'm just going to go and have a look at a few of the other tabs. So in events and invitations, I can see I've got my reminder options and stuff like that. I can do weather and also events from emails. If we use if you use shared calendar, that's an option. And you can also customize actions. But what I really want to focus on here is work hours and location, which is right at the bottom. So I do, just want to define what my standard work hours are. And that's what, sh that's what helps you to select your work week. Because if your work week was Tuesday to Saturday, when you selected your work week, then you would see that information instead. I'm going to change mine 9 to 5. And also you'll notice at the top, whilst I'm doing this, I've got a tick box where it says show work location on calendar. And I'm just going to click save to lock that information in. Once that's done its spinny wheel and it's done, I'm going to click on the cross and that will have just changed a little bit. You can't really see it on here, but you can see the new hours, the new time zone I added to the left hand side. So a couple of other tips that I use is I always block out some time for my lunch because otherwise you can get really bogged down in meetings and Blocking out that time, even if I move it at a later date or I don't have it, it means that I'm more likely to have that time available to either focus on some work or to actually physically have my lunch. So what I do is I just click on a time and set a lunch up. 
So you to do it for an hour. You may do it for half an hour, 45 minutes, whatever works best for you. But I'm going to set myself up as a lunch and then I'm going to set up a repetition. So I'm going to go to where it says don't repeat and I'm going to select daily. And I'm going to take off Saturday and Sunday because I don't need to worry about that too much. And I'm going to change that to one day and do that Saturday, Sunday again. So it occurs every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. And I can remove the end date if I want to and just have that constantly going on. And if I click save, that will lock that information in. Once I've done that, if I save, then that will always have my lunch in there every single day. So even if there is a meeting or a training session I need to deliver and it just impacts, what I can do then is just move one of them around. And then I've got that time at a different time. I don't affect anything else. And then every week, it will always be always ready and blocked out for me. So anything like lunch or any prep or planning you want to do at the beginning and the end of the day or the beginning and the end of the week, you, want, you might want to just block those times out and set a repeat so that you've got that time in your diary constantly and you're not having to add that in every single week. Once we've done that, it's looking a bit boring. And let's just say I'm just going to add in just a random project meeting. We're not going to invite attendees at the moment. I am going to have a Teams meeting on it. And I'm not going to put too much on there. I just want to block out that time for a project meeting. Now I've done that, I can kind of see a difference, but it's not very visually, it doesn't visually stand out to me. So what I want to do here is look at my categories. And if I click on that, and I click on edit, and more options, it'll just open it up. And you're going to look for these little tags, this categorize at the top. And you've got different colours you can use, and I use this all the time on every single calendar to make things stand out more for me. So I use different colours for my one-to-ones, I use different colours for my project meetings, I use different colours for my focus time or my lunch time, um, and different things like that. You want to, you might want to have a different colour for the different pieces of work that you're doing, or the types of work, or you might just want an admin colour or something if you just want a bit of focus time. Now you can just select a colour here, but you can actually name your colours as well if you go to manage categories. Right now, I'm just going to give this a green and I'm just going to save it. So you can see what that looks like. It's already popping out. Now, I use my focus time and my lunch time. My colour is yellow. Don't know why. It was just the one I clicked at that point. So I'm going to go into this meeting and because... Remember, because this is a, re a repeating meeting, there is a drop down where the edit button is and I can go into all events in this series because I actually want to change the colour on all of them. And I can click on more options there and again that will open up really nicely. And let me categorise these as yellow and save. And immediately that just pops it out. There we go, it just took a while to remember that that one was still part of the repeating. And now you can totally see that there are different colours in there. There's different things going on and it visually really helps me to understand what headspace I need to be in and what I need to be doing. Another useful thing that I do is rather than doing meetings for a, a half an hour or an hour or two hours, especially with my one-to-ones, I try and do them for around... 45 minutes rather than an hour if I need that time slot. It just means that we're a little bit more focused on the time and I get warned five minutes before if you're using Microsoft Teams that that meeting is due to expire. And it means that we can start to wrap things up. But if we do need to continue talking, then we can continue talking to the full hour because I don't book anything else in, in that 15 minutes. It's our time if we need it. Or it's the time that we can take to ourselves to relax and get ready. And if you've got back-to-back -back meetings, I do one-to-ones with multiple team members at the same time. 
So I start one, let's say, at 2 o'clock till 2.45, and then the next one will start at 3 o'clock. So I've got a nice little buffer in there, rather than having them back up to each other, and then you always inevitably run over. In the meetings application, Teams meetings, really good at letting you know when the meeting is due to end. So have a think about the timings as well of your calendar invites, especially if you're booking something in on a regular basis. Then I'm going to change this to, and if you can't see it in the drop down, you can just click on the box and over type it, and that works really nicely. So I'm going to put in a one to one meeting. Whilst I'm putting in the meeting, I can go and categorize it. You can see I've got loads of other options there before as well. And I'm going to put this one in purple so it stands out as it's a one to one, it's not a project meeting. It's not my lunch or my focus time, but it's that 45 minutes meeting. And I'm just going to drop that in and you can see how that can build. And then I can put my next one in at three o'clock. And I've just created that tiny little bit of space where what I also like to do, if I've got some key pieces of work, I will block my time out. So I'll put in a meeting for myself and just block out my diary and tell my diary what I'm doing. Because then people are less likely to drop meetings in when you want to do that focus time and you're going to be able to get that done. Plus, you can also see for a quick view then what you're actually working on during the week. Because if you don't put that information in your calendar, you're just seeing your meetings. But actually, you might be doing a lot more work as well. And if you block out product productivity times, so you block out times where you're going to be creating a course or you're going to be doing some documentation or you're going to be reviewing some content then or designing something then you can see at a quick glance in your calendar what your week looks like and not just what meetings you've got but what work you've got going on and I find that quite useful as well. The final thing I want to mention is focus time. Now Microsoft has some functions that will automatically drop some time slots into your calendar a couple of weeks in advance to ensure that you get that opportunity to focus and people don't book up that time and you can define the hours and how often it happens and things like that and you want to go into Viva Insights to do this so it's just another application in Microsoft if you don't know where it is Go into the nine dots in that top left hand corner and select Viva Insights and it'll look a little bit like this. And when I go into Viva Insights, you can see you've got lots on there, but it's focused around focus and productivity and praise and reminders and stuff. And you'll see on the home page towards the right hand side, you've got a daily focus plan. And that's really what I'm talking about. That's what I've set up on my other calendar. And you can see here, I can set the daily focus plan. So focus time is planned. We'll reserve up to two hours of focus time a day in which team chat notification will be muted. But let's go and have a look at the detail behind that focus plan and what it's going to do. So I'm going to have a look at change settings because I've just turned something on at the moment. So when I go to change settings, you can see I have selected two hours worth of focus time every day that works quite well for me but you might want a quick hour slot or you might want a lot more time you can obviously come in and change this anytime you want do you have a preference for morning or afternoon because it's going to drop it in automatically don't worry about this you can delete it and you can change it if you need to but it will just drop it in to give you some insights and it kind of forces me to sort of take a step back and think and look and make sure I've got that time when I'm not in meetings so that I can do some work. You can tell it not to schedule that time any earlier than whatever time you select. So 9am works for me. And would you like it to silence chat notifications during the focus time so you can get your work done? If at any point you don't want it to happen anymore, you do have a leave plan option. But what that's going to do is every week for the week uh, for the two week after, it's going to drop in those two hour slots where it can. It's going to use a bit of AI, a bit of cleverness, and then it's just going to block out your calendar. So again, what I go in and do is I change the category so they are the same color as my lunches, just so that works quite well for me and I know what I'm looking at. You can put in a different category if you want, so you know those slots are there. 
and it just really helps to block out your calendar and get that focus time and you can change the settings to work however you want to. There are some other options in protected time as well. So you might want to have a really good look at Viva Insights and play around with it and just see what works best for you. So have a go at any of those if any of them are new for you. If you have any more ideas, absolutely pop them in the comments and please do like and subscribe and check out the rest of the videos in this channel.